Good evening, televiewers. You welcome to this other edition of uh, the point on my media prime. Many persons are giving uh, varied opinions as to the celebration of uh, the National Day. We are talking about the 20th of May and um, the movement stand for Cameroon and uh, the CPP party also has uh, a stance uh, towards uh, that celebration. They uh, actually expressed uh, worries as to uh, that celebration and uh, they equally are suggesting ways through which uh, Cameroon could be saved uh, from where it is uh, today. We must understand that the country is uh, at crossroads with uh, very, very uh, many uh, crises at different levels. Uh, Cameroon is not too well up north with uh, the Boko Haram crisis in the northwest and southwest uh, regions. The country is sick. Uh, with uh, very many sociological, uh, so uh, socio-political crises uh, rocking the nations at other uh, levels. We are uh, this evening in the company of uh, Madame Edith Kawala. She is uh, the national president of the CPP uh, political party. She also um, is the coordinator of the Stand Up for Cameroon movement. She's in the studio with us and is our guest uh, for tonight. We're glad to have you, Madame Ka, with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been been a little while. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy to be here and very happy to discuss the nation. Okay. Uh, discuss uh, the nation uh, via communique, uh, calling on Cameroonians, uh, giving them the hope, telling them how to save uh, this nation from the current impasse in which it finds itself. Actu actually, it uh, takes a premise. Uh, from the celebration of uh, the National Day. Yes. Um, you think that something is not right with that celebration? Yes. I okay. think um, it is unfortunate, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kum, that up to now, mm -hmm. our government is not seizing every opportunity, every crisis is an opportunity. Okay. Because you get into crisis because something is terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. That is what causes a crisis something is terribly wrong mm -hmm. whether you like the way the crisis manifests itself or not if you are somebody who is really for the um the good the, the yes the good of mm -hmm. the nation the mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. of a nation you will always seize crisis as an opportunity to move forward mm -hmm. as a nation since the anglophone crisis started we have not had a conversation Mm -hmm. We've not had a conversation, a national conversation. Yes, we discuss it in the media. Mm -hmm. We as uh, political leaders, you people as journalists, and so on and so forth. But the, the nation is begging for a conversation at grassroots level. Because today, it is very, very difficult for the young Anglophone who was arrested in 2017 when there were no guns and who is still in prison today mm -hmm. to what can you tell him about 20th of may while we were going to 20th of may in the month of april in tuburu in the yep. extreme north uh, province uh, region 21 people were kidnapped for ransom 21 in a small village in one month do you really think Tuburu is feeling as if they are part of a nation? Do they hear the nation concerned about their well about their well being? Do we believe that the young boy who is here in Douala mm -hmm. and who is tempted to enter gangs and so on because he has no job, has no ability to go to school, has no ability, sees no future? Uh, in front of himself and so he is tempted by drugs and he is tempted by gangs is that young man what are we telling him on 20th of May the country has so many crises and the day that we celebrate the nation would have been an excellent day for us to stand up to come together to lay out our problems on the table and to discuss these problems and see how we move forward we do not see uh, the government in place doing that. And that is why our appeal, can we still save Cameroon, is not an appeal to the BR regime. 
really for for us at stand up for cameroon the beer regime is no longer consequential they are not going to change they have not changed they are not going to change the uh, our appeal is to us as cameroonians if we do not step up to the plate mm -hmm. every moment in history has multiple actors the government is doing what it's it's doing the regime mm -hmm. is doing what it's doing but history will ask us each and every one of us as Cameroonians, what did you do yeah. at that time? You say uh, there has not been that op opportunity uh, for Cameroonians to come together to discuss and uh, you think that the 20th of May would have um, provided that opportunity or platform for Cameroonians to talk uh, to themselves, yes. but we understand the context uh, mm -hmm. in which we find ourselves, we're talking about COVID-19, but uh, the government will tell you that there was that opportunity um, when uh, the, the government organized a major national day. I think the the first thing mm -hmm. that you want to do, if if you are sick and you want to heal yourself, the first thing that you want to do is to do an honest diagnosis. If you are sick, Cameroon today is sick. As a country, we are sick. We count the number of dead every 24 hours. At mm -hmm. Stand Up for Cameroon, we now do a, a monthly human rights report. report yeah. Somebody is dying in this country out of bad governance every single day. So you are sick. You have guns in, in, in eight regions out of ten mm -hmm. are impacted, directly impacted by violent uh, uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. The conflict crossed the other day to, to Galim right yeah. it has crossed to into the, the littoral mm -hmm. several times mm -hmm. so we realize that we are sick the first thing you want to do when you are sick is to do a proper diagnosis if you lie to yourself if you are really sick and you are you are lying to yourself you will die it is as simple as that if you if you have an illness and you are doing you are telling yourself that no uh, i don't have an illness or the illness is not as bad as as uh, as it is, are you, are you then, saying that the major national dialogue was deceptive? It was a complete sham. Okay. It was a sham. Uh, 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 it is that we do not have the time. There are so many battles to fight in this country. Mm -hmm. But I want personally, as a Cameroonian citizen, I want my money back, my eleven milliard or how many milliard they spent on that nonsense. I want it back. And the major, the major national dialogue. Yes. What are the outcomes? Yeah, outcomes. There is, uh, what did the, they resolve? The, yep. The, the, we are talking about the uh, fast tracking the decentralization uh, process. There, we are talking about <laughs> uh, the special status for the northwest and southwest uh, region. Miss, um, Mr. Yes. Kum, you know it's it's unfortunate. I was speaking to a mayor this afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate because I think I uh, and my firm strategies. Uh, we were at the forefront of decentralization in Cameroon. Okay. Do you know when we started working on decentralization? The, 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 the time we did the first local government planning for local government? 1998. Okay. 1998. We are now in, 2000, in 2021. We, decentralization was in our constitution, our 96 constitution. We started working on it technically in 98. In 2002, government created a whole ministry for decentralization. 2002, we are in 2021. So that's 19 years ago that they created a, a, an entire ministry to decentralize. It now took them from 2002 to 2010 to put out the text for decentralization. What is this government fast tracking? They have, they've been fast tracking uh, uh, decentralization since 1996. These are the things where we say we are lying to ourselves. Yeah, but, uh, I was very happy to see that it is CPDM uh, uh, regional councillors who are beginning to come out and who are coming out to complain to say this doesn't make sense. We, we, we don't have resources. We don't have a plan of action. We are not able to do anything. Mm -hmm. So where is the fast tracking? Okay, when you say um, there are recent... Mind you, let's keep in mind that National Dialogue was two, 2019. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's three years today. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you say um, 
there is a problem with the celebration of uh, the National Day. We're talking about the 20th of May, and you think that um, crisis should serve as opportunities to fix uh, things that are not working. What went wrong? Because I'm sure the intention for uh, abolishing the federal system, engaging uh, the system, the unitary system mm -hmm. that we, we have, that was in 1972, Two? was yes. to get a better united uh, nation. What went wrong? What went wrong, I think you have used the exact word, the intention. Mm -hmm. Whose intention was it? Okay. Did mm -hmm. Cameroonians intend to abolish the federal state? Cameroonians never intended to abolish the federal state. It's very important to, to, to have historical context. Okay. Um, we are talking about the independence of the French-speaking part of Cameroon in 1960 yeah. and the English-speaking part in 1961. The first place where things start to go horribly awry is in 1962. Okay. Ahijo puts out a, an ordinance, the ordinance of 1962, which creates subversion. Before that time, both in the French-speaking part and in the English-speaking part, we were a multi-party state. We were multi-party states. There was a lot of intense political activity. Now, we go to 1962. The first thing he does is create an ordinance against subversion. Basically, that ordinance says that if you have any opinion contrary to that of the state, any action contrary to that of the state, you can be accused of subversion and loss of liberty. Okay? What people did not realize with Ahijo was that he was he was preparing the grounds for 1966. for 1966 mm -hmm. exactly. So 1962, and don't forget on the on the on the in the French speaking side, we had a very active UPC grassroots UPC that was uh, a real problem uh, for for Ahijo. So by creating this ordinance on subversion, his intention was. To it, it authoritarianism. I see the act of uh, that ordinance as the act that really uh, installed authoritarianism in in Cameroon, mm -hmm. and he was preparing for 1966. Yeah. And I would say to Cameroonians that we today we are behaving exactly as our forefathers did. did yeah. We see things happening. We see them happening. We have a clear intellectual understanding of what is happening, and we are not reacting. Mm -hmm. We are not saying, stop this. We are not turning the tide. So 1966 came the one-party state. So by the time we were getting to 1972, we were in a one-party state mm -hmm. with, an, with the idea of subversion. We, are, we were already a police state. So the referendum was not a referendum. It was not an expression of the will of the Cameroonian people, mm -hmm. number one. Number two is that it was illegal. You had a federal state with a constitution that said you cannot change this form of the state. Now for, for him to uh, 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 change it, we should have, before the referendum, we should have gone back to have a constitutional uh, uh, amendment that allowed that referendum to be held. So we are talking about a date, 20th of May, on which we, we, we celebrate the nation, which is fundamentally controversial. Mm -hmm. Now, that controversy has been sitting in the population, sitting in the population for years today, and today it has come out to the point where some have taken up arms to say we no longer want this. It is not by burying your head in the sand and holding dialogues in Yaoundé. People are shooting guns in, in Northwest and Southwest. You are dialoguing in Yaoundé without the people who are shooting the guns, without the people who are victims of the gunshots, mm -hmm. without no representation of the people affected by the crisis. And you say you held a dialogue, you were talking to whom? Mm. Can you imagine, Mr. Kum, you and I, we have a problem. Mm. Then you go to your house 
and you are holding a dialogue with your wife and your children and you say you are resolving the problem you have with me how does that work <laughs> okay um madam ka the president hinted on the 10th of uh, of uh, february this year on uh, transition preparing the minds of uh, people like us know whether you got that and you're talking about saving uh, the nation it will start uh, a pointer to the right direction and that uh, we should be looking towards a possible transition in the the years to come as you know mm -hmm. at stand up for cameroon we've been talking about political transition since 2014. Mm -hmm. transition is an obligatory next step for cameroon but it is not mr bia's step i'm sorry okay he is not the one to either guide the transition, lead the transition in any way, shape, or form. He has imposed himself upon us through violence for, uh, 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 what are we, uh, 38 years now? 38 years. He, he, we are going to go to the next step again with him telling us what we should do? No, that is not going to happen. Okay. It's not. It's not going to happen. So the transition uh, that uh, the president is talking about. Uh, it's not. It's not. No, I'm not even interested in discussing transition. I think people make a mistake. Mm -hmm. We as Cameroonians need to discuss our transition, mm -hmm. but we certainly should not let Mr. Bia or CPDMB at any kind of leadership position mm -hmm. in discussing that but, transition. Uh, do you observe what is happening with uh, uh, persons who are already? Talking about uh, a possible um, the creation of a Frankist uh, movement, which will not be too uh, different from what is uh, what we have observed in uh, Chad, with the son of uh, the former uh, president uh, taking uh, over uh, from the fallen uh, president uh, Idris uh, Deby, you know. Okay, um, we are going to take a short break. Please, uh, we coming right back. Okay, I was talking about uh, the possible transition. Are you following up this movement that is preparing uh, Frank Abia to take over, uh, similar to what we have observed in Gabon uh, and in Chad? You know, Mr. Kuma, I think that uh, all mm. Cameroonians are making a huge mistake mm. by even having that conversation, okay. by even pronouncing those words. Okay. First of all, it is an insult <laughs> no it is an insult yes. to us as citizens that somebody who has never so much as addressed a good morning to us somebody who has never so much as as hinted that he's interested in anything that is happening with Cameroonians that you people should be sitting and having panels and discussing him as a potential presidential candidate it's mm. absurd it is absurd we should not even have that conversation. Yeah, but I'm sure. Uh, and and personally, I believe that you people as journalists should stop allowing his representatives to come on panels. <laughs> no, sure. because I'm a sure. nation is built on certain things. Mm -hmm. Either you are telling those of us who dedicate our time and energy to build political parties, to be on the political scene, that we are wasting our time. Because you, you come and put us on the same level yeah. as somebody who has yeah. never Madame, done anything. Madam, I'm sure, I'm sure um, panelists did not discuss uh, the current uh, Gabonese president, Ali Bongo, who is there now, and uh, nobody also discussed uh, the current chat, uh, the, the person leading chat today. But um, I just wanted to find out what you think about uh, what is circulating out there. But you, you, you also, you proposed in uh, the communique issued, uh, to, I don't know, two, three days ago, uh, that you want Cameroonians to rescue uh, the nation, and you think that um, everybody must join in this uh, uh, mission. Nobody should play the spectator. Absolutely, mm. and I want to say to you that what we should do with Chad, mm. Gabon, mm. and Togo mm. is draw lessons. That's what we should do. Okay. We should not be discussing people's sons. Mm -hmm. We let let us draw lessons to know that 
this is a possibility mm -hmm. how do we counter it okay how do we make sure that it does not happen to China. us mm -hmm. it is not even a possibility it does not even enter anybody's mind mm -hmm. that this is a possibility that is the question which is on the table and we must join hands as Cameroonians there is no um, there's no other question on the table right now other than transition okay. the only question for Cameroon right now on the table because we we see that this government will not resolve the problems the crisis which we have the, uh, discussed so our our major objective right now is how do we get them out so that we can start rebuilding. Yes, but in, in, in this uh, effort to get them out, uh, you think that no community should play uh, the spectator uh, role. How yes. do you get everybody involved in this? One is that Cameroonians should stop talking. Okay. I am on uh, several social media, media platforms, yeah. and we talk so much. Mm -hmm. And on social media platforms, I can tell you that as a leader, um, I reach out to people on platforms i see you very active and you are saying you are ready to to do this and to do that and i reach out to you and say hey we are working on this mm -hmm. right now would you care to to join, to join us yeah. uh there you lose 95 percent of the people so Cameroonians have to realize that if we stay in the talking stage and we do not move to action this is a system it has been in place for the last 60 plus years we are not going to dismantle it by talking if we continue talking we will find ourselves in chad we will find ourselves in gabon yes if we continue talking without acting so we have to realize that we need to carry out action it's not action in one day it's not action in one week it is continuous action to build up the dynamic that can stop this regime yeah but mobilizing uh, the cameroonian uh, population uh, is not easy given that cameroon we are talking about a nation that has uh, more than 250 tribes we really know the differences that exist between the different uh, regions it will require lots of um, of our cooperation from within the political sphere and uh, the civil society are you working in that direction or you stay hoping that the uh, Standard for Cameroon can do the job? I believe, you know, Standard for Cameroon, we have always been open and mm -hmm. we are always working, we are always present. Anytime people say, let's work together, we are, we are present. Uh, several initiatives to bring people together, we have been at the forefront of those, those initiatives. Mm -hmm. But I want to say this to, to Cameroonian uh, uh, citizens, don't wait for the politicians. Okay. Don't wait for the politicians. Let's go to Burkina Bay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You need to join movements now. There are movements now who are telling you that we have to prepare for this thing. We have to prepare for our grassroots action. That's the movement to join. And stop. Well, I hear Cameroonian, oh, I wanted to join, but you see, when I looked there, uh, it was a francophone, I'm an anglophone, then the anglophone, the francophone said, no, I looked there, it was more anglophone. We need to stop criticizing and move into action. Movements are built by people. Mm -hmm. You are sitting there criticizing, join the movement and see how to build it. And I believe at this stage that the if citizens keep waiting for politicians to uh, come together in one big platform and so on, we will not save Cameroon. No, we will not. Citizens need to take the forefront. They need to, to, to step up to the plate. Mm. And they need to say, how can I help? What can I do? I invite Cam uh, 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 Cameroonians to contact us at Stand Up for Cameroon. We are very open. We tell you, we don't we don't force you to join us if you say i want to stay in my own organization we say great what are you doing there and how can we work in synergy mm. so that we move 
we move forward. Madam, Madam Kawala, you want a regime change, an end to the current Absolutely. regime. We know that elections are coming out in uh, 2025. Why not just mobilize? Uh, don't you believe that through elections, if we were to mobilize many persons, um, the regime is going to be kicked out? We have tried that mm -hmm. for 38 years. It's not working. It's not working. <laughs> there are over 100 people right now, as you and I speak, in jail. Mm -hmm. They are in jail right now because of elections. Because they went to the last elections believing that they could go through with an electoral uh, uh, system. Mm -hmm. No. And the other thing is that history tells us, analysis tells us that you cannot remove a dictatorship who is controlling the electoral system through elections. No. We, we have described this thing uh, several times. I always like to use the football metaphor mm -hmm. that you cannot go to say that you are playing in a football tournament. You are 10 teams. One team is building the stadium and they have built it on a slope. They are standing at the, at the top of the slope and the other nine teams are at the bottom. Then they have the referee. They are selling the tickets to the match. They have the, 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 the faker foot. All of those people are from their players and ex-players. And then you say, oh, go and play the tournament. What tournament are you going to play? Okay. What tournament are you uh, going to play? But now, um, this transition you're talking about, you want uh, the regime uh, to end, and uh, you expect that uh, there should be dialogue. Who is dialoguing with who? There are so many points mm -hmm. of dialogue today. Mm -hmm. um, there is... The, the way that stand-up sees the, the dialogue, it is a bottom-up dialogue. Mm -hmm. So dialogue should start at the local level. Mm -hmm. We think that it can start at the level of the um, municipality, for example. We should have dialogue at the municipal level where we are talking about the nature of the state. The form different, of state. no, different from the form of state. the okay. nature of the state. Yes. Okay. What is the relationship between the citizen and the state? Because today we are still in a colonial state okay. by its nature. Mm -hmm. That is, the government does not realize that its job is to serve me as a citizen. The government does not realize that its job is to protect me as a citizen. What? you look at our armed forces where do they spend their energy are they protecting us as Cameroonian citizens they are protecting people who are in power if, 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 if we are in a, in, a, in a crowd today and we have uh, uh, somebody from the government there if there are 20 policemen 10 will be around <laughs> the, the, the person from the government whereas while the population will be left to fend for itself um, in, in, in our nature of relationship with the administration, when you go for your child's birth certificate, for any kind of document, do you have the sentiment that people realize that they are there to serve you as a citizen? That the government's job is to, is to give you service? So we, there is much to be done to transform the nature of the state. We inherited a colonial state and we never sat down to say, you know what, how do we change things so, so that the state is at the service of the citizen? That is number one. Then we have the question of the form mm -hmm. of the state, which is very, very important. What is clear today is that every single Cameroonian wants more autonomy at the local level. Every single Cameroonian sees that this unitary state has not worked mm -hmm. for us. Unitary decentralized uh, form. Yes. It's not working. It, it's, 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 it's not working. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like the terms of decentralization and federalism. I just did some professional work on it uh, again recently. And they don't mean anything until you get to the content. If you talk about German federalism versus American federalism versus Nigerian federalism, it is night and day. It's very, very different things. So let's not get caught up in terminology. Yeah. What a, 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 a decentralized state is, 
is a transfer of money and power to the local level. And if you look at states which are decentralized throughout the world, you have a variation from those like Cameroon who spend less than 15% of their national budget at the local level versus if you take the Americans, they are spending about 50%, and you take the Germans, they are spending 70% at the local level. Those are the conversations we need to have. Let people not get caught up about decentralization, federalism, and so because somebody can go and do nonsense, call it federalism, and come and serve it to you people, and you take it. Don't get distracted by the terminology. What we want to know is how much money will be, will be spent at the local level. What is the power of decisions with regard to development that can be taken at that local level? level. Mm. Yeah. Now, you talk about um, the dialogue. You say dialogue should should, should uh, look at uh, the, 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 nature the nature of the state, the form, the form, the form of, of the state. state. Yeah. We, must, we must do uh, analyze our history mm -hmm. and do reconciliation. Mm. So many citizens in this country are at odds with the country. Mm -hmm. We have the, the Anglophone history. We have the history of what happened at the time of independence. Mm -hmm. We have the history of the north and the south of this country. Mm -hmm. We have so many historical things to sit down, moments to sit down, analyze, and reconcile the nation mm -hmm. now, to be able to call ourselves a nation. Let's look at uh, the transition. You think that uh, to save this nation, there is need for transition. How should that work? Transition means one. Mm -hmm. the regime has to go mm -hmm. and as we have said it the best way for the regime to go and Cameroonians should realize this the best way for the regime to go is the Burkina Bay style mm -hmm. it is the Tunisian style okay. why why is that important because it is the people stepping into their power and removing somebody from power it means that anybody else who sits on that seat after that remembers that it, I should watch how I do my things because one day people can come and remove me from here. So it is a moment which is very, very important in the history of a, of a country. That moment of democratic revolution. That moment where the people exercise their power. Mm -hmm. We say power to the people. It's written in the constitution that it is the people who hold the power. There is a time in the history of each nation where people have to exercise that power so that those whom they delegate it to remember that this power is not mine. It belongs, it belongs to, to the people. They just gave it to me to, to, to manage, uh, to manage mm -hmm. for some time. Yeah. So, so that is step one. Step two, of course, you have to put in a transitional government. Now, a transitional government means people who will not partake in the next election. Mm -hmm. So anybody who is part of transitional government is automatically saying I will I take myself out of the running for the next uh, uh, elections. Ele ele elections. Mm -hmm. And their job is to rebuild the foundation of the nation. You have to rewrite the constitution. You have to reform the, the institutions, we have to reform the balance of power in, in the institutions, we have to reform the electoral system okay. so that we can have free and fair elections. And it is only after this that you now talk about elections. This transitional period, in most, so many African countries have done it. Uh, we can stay with the Burkina Bay uh, example. They did their transition in 18 months. Sudan is undergoing transition right now mm -hmm. after getting rid of Bashir. Mm -hmm. And how did the Sudanese de do it? They went on the streets and got rid of Bashir. I, I don't know how Cameroonians think they can avoid this uh, uh, step of taking back their power. Yeah, but maybe they, they believe in the ballot box. You mobilize them better for the no, ballot box. No, I, I, I don't think Cameroonians, Cameroonians don't possible. believe in the, in the ballot, ballot box. box. Okay. They don't go to vote. Mm. They don't go to vote. They don't go to vote. Uh, but um, you understand that Cameroonians are also 
uh, not afraid. Very, yes, they are not too interested in issues of politics. Uh, how do we get them to, to, to get? No, to I think that Cameroonians are very interested in issues of politics. It is one of the countries where people discuss politics, they watch politics, they talk about politics. Mm -hmm. I think that. The, the the most important thing that people have to realize is that that talk has to go with action mm -hmm. like everything else we do in our lives mm -hmm. if you if you just talk about it and you don't take action for it to happen it will not uh, it will not happen now uh, the transition uh, how do you select those to man the transitional uh, government those who man the transitional government as I said one they are not uh, yeah. up for the next election yes. Yes. two it is people who have shown, one, that they have the interests of the country at heart. Mm -hmm. Two, that they have integrity. They have credibility with the people. Um, three, they must have some leadership and technical ability because it's about organizing the, 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 yeah. the, the country and, mm -hmm. and organizing things. So if you give, if I give examples, right now let us take if we take some of the lawyers who have been defending us throughout this period mm -hmm. at personal sacrifice taking risks taking uh, uh, challenges we realize that we have quite a few of them mm -hmm. who could be in such a transition uh, a government if we go to um, the religious leaders who have been able to okay. co courageous enough to stop to 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 to, out on, to, to so step it. out mm -hmm. talk out on issues of rights and so on and so forth we realize that we have a few mm -hmm. um you may have political leaders mm -hmm. who decide to join the tra transitional government and give up their chance to um to, to go into to to run for office mm -hmm. so you realize that um we do have people within cameroon and definitely we can go and borrow a few heads from our diaspora as well are you discussing this already with uh, some of them of course okay of course of course we are discussing this with some of them of course at stand at the level of stand up we have a list okay. because if something happens tomorrow we we want to be ready mm -hmm. for that transition you want to to be to be ready but um which means that um what are you saying political parties for now should also not be are you very comfortable that we have more than uh, 317 political parties in the country you know uh, I think it's a non-issue okay. I think it's a complete non-issue you went if, the, if you I Cameroonians to, if yeah. I ask you to name 10 political parties you you will not be capable I'm surprised of. myself yes to, you to hear that you you, you will not be capable so it's I mean what these I can. I am a political party, mm -hmm. and I am not at all disturbed by the two hundred and ninety. How many or other non, or, non or, 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 or non political parties? Mm -hmm. It's it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. We should stop. I think this is CPDM discourse where they like to say, "Oh, the opposition is not united." Look at them. There are so many. The, you know, we talk about systems like the U.S., mm -hmm. where we say, oh, they have two political parties. It's a lie. Yeah, there there are one hundred political parties in the United States. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Only two matter, mm -hmm. right? So in Cameroon, we have less than 10 political parties who matter. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to what they're saying. Let's talk to those people and let's move on. So the way to save uh, Cameroon is uh, through um, a transition and an end to this regime? It's through, a it's through, first of all, Cameroonians stepping into their power. Okay. Cameroonians deciding we have the power to take our country in a different way direction that's step one step two is using that power now to get to transition and then step three is guiding through the transition Madam, and rebuilding Madam, the Kamala, foundation of understand the country. how Cameroon operates uh, you have been arrested um, more than three times now <laughs> uh, t more than ten I think yeah, more than ten times you have been <laughs> yes. arrested and you know what happened to the guys of uh, CRM were in prison today yes uh, how possible is that going to to be we only get we only get here. we mm -hmm. only get arrested because the rest of you are sitting at home if we are ten thousand in the street nobody can arrest us mm -hmm. if we are hundred thousand in the street nobody can arrest us we get arrested because we are still <laughs> yes it, that is the fact of the matter is that we are getting arrested because we are still too few mm -hmm. 
if we are a hundred thousand we are 23 million cameroonians we are 23 million cameroonians to date nobody has held a protest of 2000 people so if cameroonians do not step into their power and decide that this is something that we want these other countries we are talking about Burkina, Burkina Faso, Sudan, and so on. There were hundreds of thousands of people yeah, but you, on the streets. You, no government, no army can, you talk can, about, can you, stop you. You talked about uh, something non-violent. How possible? Can Absolutely. you control? Yeah, if people were to come out and mass, uh, it's going to also be very difficult for you to manage that crowd. How do you tell them Look, not to go uh, violent? One is that that is why we start talking about non-violence right now mm. and that is why those who really want change for cameroon need to join a movement because we train on non-violence we uh we test as you know we go out on the street ourselves we face violence with non-violence so those are the people who will be leading at that time mm. because they know what to do on the street and we see that if you have leadership which is showing that example of non-violent you control the crowd if you are if the leadership starts to be violent you you you, you lose control mm. so um you know this is why we keep insisting on non-violent so that the day we, we are coming out people should already have it in their minds that we are coming out in non-violent okay uh, we you are, we are talking about how to save uh, cameroon the prime minister um this was in in, in Douala some days back yes. to meet with uh, uh, members of Shikam out here in uh, the nation's economic capital you followed up with what uh, transpired out there mm -hmm. he came with a delegation with the intention of uh, getting Shikam uh, interested and involved in the reconstruction process of uh, the troubled southwest and northwest uh, regions um, you made sense out of uh, this meeting no okay no no sense whatsoever um investment goes into a framework i mean this is uh, i think business 101 mm -hmm. people do not put their money into places where their investment may be burnt tomorrow where their investment may be shot at tomorrow where they cannot keep their workers safe right so the prime minister's job one is to end the crisis you cannot tell people about reconstructing as i told you we are doing the um uh, uh, the human rights report it is not because we have stopped talking about it in the media everybody has crisis fatigue mm -hmm. so unless it is 20 people who die or 50 people who die we we uh, we no longer talk about the incidents in the northwest and southwest mm -hmm. that it's not because we're not talking about them that they are not occurring they are happening every single day the insecurity remains real the people who are in the the, the northwest and southwest and who are doing business talk to them they will tell you the cost at which they are doing business so we need to um realize that the 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 government's job one is to get the, the is to end the crisis mm -hmm. yeah but the prime minister is uh, making his efforts to see uh, the government wants to reconstruct the service and other regions he is the head of government and he's seeing how um, business persons in, in the nation can uh, accompany government reconstruct these uh, regions uh, how do you expect the prime minister to, to stop the crisis it 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 is so ridiculous because that prime minister is from the no southwest province mm -hmm. uh, so southwest, southwest region, region. Mm -hmm. can he go to his go to to his village without uh, uh, um, protective gear without being surrounded by uh, 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 troops is he going to give that gear and those troops to every businessman who wants to do uh, every business person who wants to do business in the southwest region i mean we should stop with the ridiculous in cameroon we should stop with the ridiculous you cannot be going to tell business people come and invest in a region where explosives were going off in in kumba town the day before 
how how do you expect people to have the 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 the, the serenity to go and put their investment there and we do not see the steps by government once again right now as we speak government has no initiative on the table to end this crisis none yeah it, there is no there's no dialogue going on with the people in the in the in in those regions the 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 the, the young men that uh, today we were doing some research on ddr they said they have a ddr center that people should go put down their guns and join the ddr center in this 2021 the dd the guys uh, the young men from the ddr centers have been on the streets they are protesting Cameroonians don't want to protest the ddr boys are protesting they have been on the streets three times since the beginning of this year yeah, but you because it, yeah. they went to, they have gone they put down their guns and government made a promise and government is not keeping its promise yeah you say uh, the government may not have um a blueprint on how to end the but maybe negotiations they backdoor, don't, they don't maybe, even have an attempt yeah but maybe backdoor negotiations we don't maybe, be, we don't need on, backdoor you, you, yeah. negotiations mm. we need the the, the 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 there are of course discussions which can take place in private mm. but the people to whom the affront has has occurred the victims in this crisis is the civilian population in Northwest and Southwest mm -hmm. region. Mm -hmm. Government at the hour where we speak, stand up for Cameroon in our last report, we, we published a report, there are close to 500 young persons still in jail at this hour where we speak. The majority of them arrested in 2017 when there was no violence. Please, when uh, 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 um, uh, what is but Mancho BBC still doing in jail if this government wants the end to this crisis? What is Mr. Penn still doing in jail if government wants the end to this crisis? What are the, all those young people who were arrested at the time when there were no guns, so you cannot accuse them of violence, there was no violence at that time. What are they still doing in jail? Okay, uh, Mr. Ben uh, Aki, Dr. Ben Aki is writing, he says, uh, Mr. Liu, could you ask uh, uh, Madame Ka Wala whether she thinks the 1970 referendum was a legitimate East Cameroon? Uh, uh, okay. But I'm sure you, you talked about I, that also already. Yes, 1972. Mm. Uh, that was the, he missed the beginning of the okay. of the program. I think we started off by saying, and and it is also the premise mm. in uh, my 20th of May message mm. is that this date is illegitimate. Mm. This date is problematic. This date is it, it does not hold water as the national day of the country. The referendum took place in an authoritarian state and in violation of the federal constitution of the moment. Mm. So, um, uh, Dr. Ben, I am sure you, you got a, um, an answer to that, but uh, what is actually making news uh, today in Cameroon? This uh, embezzlement, uh, corruption, mismanagement of uh, COVID funds, and now uh, we are even getting information, do not uh, yet authentic, uh, that some ministers having us not to leave uh, the nation, uh, Cameroon. Do you see this as a trap? How do we explain that in 2021, 20, uh, in the midst of a crisis, um, global crisis, some ministers can still dare to 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 to, to, to steal to, money. To steal money. Yeah. How do we explain this? It is the modus operandi of the BR regime. Mm -hmm. These ministers are stealing money every day. It so happens that these particular funds um, uh, were uh, set aside and had specific processes. They were they were set aside in in a specific process, which we can now audit and and uh, see what exactly was happening. Um, in principle, we should have um, we should have ministers arrested by now. We should have ministers arrested. We should have ministers who have resigned at this hour. The prime minister and the secretary general of the presidency should start by resigning themselves because they are the persons responsible 
Yes, this this uh, th this p possibility of of giving special um, uh, treatment, uh, uh, special markets. They, they they were able to give special contracts, mm -hmm. which meant that they do not they did not pass by the regular government contractual process. They had a special process. It was ordered by the Secretary General of the Presidency. He gave the authority to the Ministry of Health to do that. And I, I, I said when I was coming that I brought my computer because okay. it's outrageous the amount of money that we are talking about. Imagine these people have spent 880 million francs CFA for 16 ambulances. Not a single ambulance has been delivered to date where we speak. Imagine that they had 96 service providers, none of whom had the agreement to provide services to the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. And they got contracts worth 600 million francs CFA. One person, one person, Mr. Abaka Siddiqui Diaby, got contracts worth close to 800 million, 796 million. Him alone. He alone is representing three companies. He got contracts worth 796 million. And guess what? He bears the same last name as the, the gentleman who was nominated by the Minister of Health yeah. to to preside over the working group. His name is Usman Diaby. So mm -hmm. Usman Diaby was giving contracts to Sidiki Diaby worth 796 million. And nobody, I mean, these guys should, they take us for jokers. They take us for real idiots. Nobody from the minister did not realize that, hey, the people are getting the, the exact same name. People have the same name. They are getting uh, uh, contracts here. The the uh, the the working group. Mm -hmm. hmm? They went over budget. Imagine, imagine that they had for personal uh, protection equipment, right? They had a budget of two point nine billion francs CFA. That is the the masks and the and the uh, 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 the the, um, the gloves and so on for the medical personnel. 2.9 billion was their budget. They spent 23 billion. Mm -hmm. You had a budget of 2.9 billion and you spent 23 billion, and nobody it it, it rang no alarm bells anywhere. How can yeah, you yeah, yeah, how yeah. can you go over budget by 20 billion? Yeah, but, Frank CFA. But, 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 but now, uh, there are, some of the ministers are being auditioned in Yaoundé, and uh, this is coming at the request of the International uh, Monetary Fund. Fund. Yes. So to say that uh, uh, those organs that were charged with uh, regulating, monitoring how money is spent when not doing the job. It is to say, as we have always said, uh, is that this government, this regime, is rotten to the core. Believe you me, in your house, I am talking about your home management. Mm -hmm. You cannot allocate a budget for 10,000 francs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and somebody goes and spends 200,000 and you don't realize it. Is it possible? That is what we are talking about. That they, 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 they allocated 2.9 billion and they spent 23 billion and nobody was aware of this, of this until they wanted more money because we have to realize why this audit is taking place mm -hmm. it's not because somebody wanted to 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 manage our money well it is that they went the cameroon is currently in the negotiation phase with the imf and the imf said hey can you please account for the funds which you already received before we give you more money that's why we are seeing this uh, um uh, why we are seeing this audit taking place. Imagine that for communication, I hope 
uh, Prime TV got some of that money uh, for communication. For, for, com for communication, mm. they allocated seventy million, and they spent. No. Yes. Not seventy million. They they allocated seventy million, okay, okay, and yeah. they spent three hundred and ten million. Mm. How how do you do that? How is that possible? To be over budget. Mm not one time two times <laughs> you know it, it, it's 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 incredible for covid tests so while we were looking for covid tests mm -hmm. because we were looking for covid tests there was a point in time here uh, uh, in the month of march where cameroonians you couldn't find a covid test mm -hmm. people were getting up at 6 a.m in the morning to go and look for a covid test and so on and so forth um they went over budget by 21 Billion. Yeah, but, but, but there's also um, an issue there where um, we understand that globally uh, this is bought at this amount and uh, yet the, the Ministry of Public Health went uh, buying this for, for close to they, something that was supposed to be bought for 7,000 francs they're paying for. Is it, was it tying with the way our contracts are done? That well, the, yeah. he, he, the, here is the thing, is that a, a a a working group was put into place and let me tell you the job of the working group their working group this is what is written in the in their their um, uh, uh, cahier de charge the, you know the, the uh, terms of reference uh, terms of reference exactly mm -hmm. they were to examine the offers that were that were brought they were to give technical advice they were to formulate proposals on price mm -hmm. So exactly what you are talking about. How is it that a test which the supplier is selling at 7,000 francs is being bought by the government of Cameroon at 17,000 francs? And then when the same test becomes uh, uh, available, that is a donor agency provides a subvention. So the test is now costing 2,900 2, francs. We are still buying the same test at 17 thousand francs of course if you are buying at seventeen thousand then you cannot buy enough tests for the population if you could buy it at three thousand francs or four thousand francs and you are buying at seventeen thousand mm. it means that you are buying a, a lot fewer fewer tests mm. um the the this working group's job was to ensure that when they make recommendations the recommendations are followed up and they were to give reports so one of the things that the auditors are saying is that we don't see the reports of the working group. Okay, the reports are not there. Um, we're out of time. Good evening, um, Mr. Liu, and my regards to Madam Kawala. I remember in law and government while in secondary school was told uh, for one to be elected or appointed in high office, he or she should be married. I don't know uh, much about Madam Kawala, but I was told uh, she's uh, not married. How then? Does she intend to be president of the republic? Molaikema is writing from, uh, Mi <laughs> from Mi Paris. Really, Mr. Yes. Mr. Molaikema really, I don't, I don't, really, yeah, he's know, worried about my state of marriage. They are robbing him blind here. <laughs> All of these people who are robbing him blind are married, very, very married. Okay. Some of them have two, three wives. I'm not sure. Uh, is that his problem? I'm not really? sure. I, I'm not sure that is found in any any law. Uh, hi, Liu. We can save Cameroon if resources used for ammunition and war operations by both parties uh, to the conflict can be invested in education and investment trust funds. Uh, government leadership and politicians can uh, go hawk a train. They are all jokers. Uh, JN Abgo is writing from uh, Kumba. This one's uh, Senderic says I'm following very closely, watching from Bonaberry. Good evening to you. Uh, Derek and to you, uh, Madam. This one says Cameroon can be saved only when uh, there is a proper hygiene in the government that is uh, eradicate corruption and respect of the constitution. Uh, thank you for that one. What uh, writing uh, from the United Kingdom? Uh, you are right, Madam. Politicians are all liars. Uh, the reason why we are where we are in the place uh, for the first time, Madam, you have spoken uh, the truth. <laughs> yeah, but I think she has always spoken uh, the truth. Um, yes, um, he's also writing from out of uh, the country. This one says, hello, uh, special greetings to you, Madam Ka. Uh, yes, she received your greetings. I'll just take a few messages because we are t out of time. Uh, this one says, hello, evening to you, sir, and 
Madam Edith Carr, voila, I really like your enthusiasm towards the development of Cameroon. We can still save Cameroon, but we need the support of the military and the consignment of the general Cameroon population. We need to be united to overthrow uh, this regime that has kept Cameroon in the dark for 40 years. Clinton Eno is writing from Boya. Uh, good evening. Uh, now that it's uh, clear, Cameroonians are very afraid to lose their lives in any protest. Please ask Madame Kawala the way forward. Uh, Gellison is writing from Tombell. Yes, I asked that question already and she told you that you must step out of, uh, you must beat your fears. Good evening. What is the next step now? I am interested to move the nation forward. No more too much uh, talking. Okay. Uh, Great. See, yes. Send a message. Okay. Good evening, Mr. <laughs> Liu. I like the courage of Madame Ka. If we had uh, three of Madame in our country, we would not be where we are now. Endum. Hope is writing from a loom. Uh, Madame Ka, we unfortunately have to end here. Mm -hmm. I hope you create more time. Um, I want to play there. Madame Bejeline, you guys should look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope next week we create time to be here again or the week after this. We unfortunately have to end here. Okay. I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And I hope many are like, was it Hope, who is ready to um who is ready for for action mm -hmm. and uh, they should please contact us they should please contact us uh, those who are ready for action um because it's time for action let's okay. talk more action if you just watched uh, the program and you want uh, to talk to madame Ka, please just uh, ask her number i'll send it to you so that you can reach out to her mm -hmm. Yes, we have to end here. Cannot the message is keep falling. <laughs> we I want to say thank you to you guys who took time off to watch the program. To you, Eli Desmond, Petran, and um, Noel who are uh, producing this program. We only want to say thank you to you, Tabby, Nabebrayanta. Stay blessed. Bye bye.